The African American community on Staten Island has always been close knit with families knowing each other. Um, if there's a saying that be careful what you say and who you say it about because everybody's related somehow. And it was a great place to grow up. This is my mother and Linda's mother and our aunt and a cousin. This is a picture of John uh, Pedro and Eliza Weeks, who are my great, great, great grandparents. This photo is about 1963. I think our history uh, should be memorialized, and what better way to do that than through uh, picture and through video. It is a picture of my mother in the center, uh, her sister and her other sister. Um, they have it up as part of their uh, uh, Children's History Museum, and it's a photo that changes when you walk by it. It goes from them and it turns into me. My father and my mother broke up fairly early, so I don't know much about his family. So uh, then I was here, didn't meet my dad till I was in grad school at Columbia University at 29 years old. And that's when I was aware of my Native American heritage. I sought out who I was and I've been following my culture. Because once we know who we are, we know where we came from, we know where we're going. This photo um, is the photo of the first civic association that um, African Americans started. This is my dad, who was the youngest member of this group. This is where I believe my, uh, I got the gene for um, being engaged in civics. In the early 30s, when tuberculosis was quite prevalent in the United States, it was difficult to get nurses to work in the sanitariums. Many African American and Caribbean nurses came to Seaview Hospital to work. My aunt told me that the patients referred to her and the other nurses at Seaview Hospital as their black angels. I joined the Count Basic Band in about 1950, and uh, I've been practically, practically in that band since then. This is a picture of Stephen Gray as an elderly man. And the story goes that during the week, this elderly man used to braid his beard so it would be nice and fluffy on Sunday morning when he would take the braid out and comb it. I had a motto that knowledge is power. But what I realized that the power comes from what you do with the knowledge. The uniqueness of the First Central Church is that it was started by both African Americans and Liberians here in Staten Island. What many people don't know is that there is a very large Liberian population on this island. So I'm excited that the Central Family Life Center and the First Central Baptist Church caters to uh, the diaspora. And my father was the first black florist on Staten Island. When, you, when people died, they didn't keep you like two days, they kept you for a whole week. And what my father used to do and my mother, in between the visiting hours, they would go down with flowers. And if it was a flower that was dying, they would replace it. So people always thought, oh, you gotta get your flowers from the rose because they, their flowers never die. It's interesting to find these histories and to see how our ancestors you know, call out to us and say, see me, I'm here.
I appreciate this opportunity to share my family's history with the Chukyu. And uh, I am really grateful. I'm grateful to be able to tell you a little bit about my family, who I'm very proud of. And just thank you. Thank you.